Uh, he admonishes his closest comrades to remain in him, and the admonition still holds, of course, for you and me. Today's uh, reading from Acts of the Apostles is a little bit longer, but it's a, a good one. It's the first big controversy in the church, and we hear the so-called uh, Council of Jerusalem today. So we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Once again, we open ourselves to his Spirit present in this place. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. In our Mass intention today, we're remembering Dan Cheeseman. Almighty, ever-living God, who raised up the Bishop St. Athanasius as an outstanding champion of your son's divinity, mercifully grant that, rejoicing in his teaching and in his protection, we may never cease to grow in knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, My brothers, you are well, <clears throat> you are well aware that from the early days <clears throat> God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first concerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The words of the prophets agree with this as is written. After this, I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David. From its ruins, I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord, even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord, who accomplishes these things known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God, but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town as he has been read in the synagogues every Sabbath. The Word of the Lord. <clears throat> Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. <clears throat> deeds to all nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. 
He governs the people with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. So the uh, Council of Jerusalem, the problem is the work of people like Paul and Barnabas, who speak today and in Acts along with Peter, is that uh, they're almost too successful. Uh, it, uh, there are so many Gentiles that want to become believers, want to be baptized. Uh, the first generation of disciples, including all 12 apostles, were all originally Jewish who came to understand Jesus as the fulfillment of the Jewish prophecies. Many felt that uh, for anyone wanting to be baptized, wanting to be a disciple like them, they should become Jewish first. They should, uh, you know, be circumcised, ex uh, observe the Levitical dietary uh, codes, uh, uh, and so forth. Paul and Barnabas have a different opinion, and their opinion wins the day. And it's supported by Peter and proclaimed by James, who's the leader of the Jerusalem uh, church at the time. They thought that people could just come directly to Jesus, that they could become disciples without all of the other things. Thank goodness they came to that conclusion. It's really pretty extraordinary that they could break out of what was normal, the norm for almost every one of them, and allow people to, to come directly uh, to discipleship, to, to baptism. It opens a floodgate, and the faith will catch on and spread across Europe and across the world. I think if each of us here, uh, if it were possible to trace our faith family tree, there's a good chance it would go right back to Paul and Barnabas, Paul being the uh, apostle to the Gentiles, uh, and their uh, work spreading the good news. Uh, this diversified the church. It opened up uh, the possibility that, that people could come directly to faith and baptism, and it changed the church. And also, this so-called Council of Jerusalem, recounted part of it in the reading today, becomes uh, also a, a vehicle over the course of centuries the church would have councils uh, come together to wrestle with some important issue, uh, an issue of dogma, uh, whatever, Vatican II, the issue was just the church in the modern world, and would make in those councils definitive uh, teachings and practice that, that would stick. Uh, today, uh, they do that with, with this teaching. This is the first council, a little bit not organized like subsequent councils like Nicaea and uh, whatever, but uh, nevertheless, uh, a pivotal experience in the life of the church. It's our history. They believe deeply in the leadership of the Holy Spirit, that the church was being led by the Spirit, so they they each have a forum to express themselves, and then they relied on the Spirit to make a decision, which is proclaimed by James today. 
we still rely deeply on the spirit. Uh, that there's a lesson, I think, maybe in uh, this experience that would apply to our 21st century. There's so much disagreement and polarization. If we could just rely on the spirit uh, and find that common ground, uh, it would be a blessing for us here in our century. So we hear these readings as uh, connected to our ancestors and our church. This is our story. I invite you to stand with me then as we do rely on the Holy Spirit here in our own day and we ask God to hear our prayers. And of course, we never forget to lift up our family and friends, members of the parish here, especially those who are in any kind of trouble today. We pray to the Lord. And these days we continue to pray for peace in our world, for an end to the violence in Ukraine and in Israel, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, you call each of us to be disciples, to also be a part of the story of salvation. We ask for your grace every day, and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. Look, O Lord, upon the offerings we present to you in commemoration of St. Athanasius, and may witnessing to your truth bring salvation to those who profess, as he did, an unblemished faith through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Today, especially, we're remembering Dan Cheeseman and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Of course, Jesus, who taught his disciples at the farewell discourse, the Last Supper, also taught his disciples elsewhere how to pray. We have his prayer, and so we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer one another then some sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Almighty God, that the true divinity of your only begotten Son, which we firmly profess with Saint Athanasius, may through this sacrament ever give us life and protection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.